All right, welcome back to my next painting video. This is a big deno, and this is a cool Conan sculpt by ASR Studios. And this is a piece of artwork that I decided I would like to try and replicate in this painting video. Unfortunately, when I started painting, I forgot to start the camera and I missed the first probably 20 or 30 seconds of painting. But because of the technique I'm using, which is a wet in wet, it has looks like I've missed quite a lot. So wet in wet is where you take paints directly from your palette and actually blend and mix them on the model itself. To do that, I'm using Joe Sonia Magic Mix Medium to help extend the drying time. And working relatively quickly, but with quite, quite thick paint. So that's about uh, three or four minutes worth of painting there. And I've used the hairdryer to quickly accelerate the drying time. So from here, what I'm doing after creating the volumes using the wet and wet and putting rough ideas of where I want light and rough ideas of where I want shadow using the green, I will go in and continue working with the actual shapes of the muscles and defining them a little bit more. Again, this is still using wet in wet. It's a little bit more dilute here and I'm just trying to get the light placements in the, in the correct spots and also make sure that I've got enough shadows. This is fantastic camera work, excellent. This is a really fun process to use because there's a lot of freedom, there's a lot of uh, expression you, you can get out of your, your colors, but it doesn't always, it's not always controllable. So I think you've got to be aware of the fact that sometimes things might not look exactly as you intended. So for me, this is always a starting point for a, a volume or, or a, an area as opposed to the end result. So this, this entire painting video is dedicated to me really considering a piece of artwork and trying to replicate that piece of artwork with this. And I made it an additional challenge for myself by taking what is quite a stylistic piece of artwork and trying to replicate that on what is an extremely realistic sculpt. So, a bit of a challenge. Uh, there's four or five colors in play here on the skin tones. The first tone is a is an orangey red so this is actually a Vallejo model color called scarlet and then a green which is a Vallejo model color called olive green the basic skin tone which is actually a color called peanut butter from scale fantasy which is a weird name for a color but it was the first time I've used it in probably six months, and I absolutely love it. It's become one of my favorite colors. I'm planning on utilizing it for more skin tones in future. Uh, so, and then there was the ubiquitous sunny skin tone and natural flesh that I used for the light areas. So, those were all blended on the model uh, using the medium to help them flow together and work together. And the ex you can already see the extent of the volumes is, is there already re ready to, to work with. It's a super easy technique, very, very quick. I think if you weren't, if you weren't trying to do a display piece and you were just working through you know, some skin tones on humans, It'd be really, really fun to just paint an army like this. So what I'm doing now is something I talked about a lot in my previous videos, and it's the illusion of colors existing beside other colors. 
when the hair and other elements are still that very grey tone, makes the skin tone look lighter than it is. So by just painting in the hair and the belt, it gives you a bit better understanding of what the skin tone actually looks like. So. <coughs> so here I'm just considering the work relative to the artwork, always uh, referring back to the artwork. I have a printed out copy of it sitting beside my painting table. So one tricky aspect of replicating the artwork is it has quite a high level of contrast, uh, particularly on the upper parts of the skin. So it's really challenging to create that same level of contrast on ultimately what is a very realistic sculpt. So I had to take some creative liberties working with uh, the highlights and the volumes themselves. Here I'm just continuing with that filling in of the basic tones. Uh, this is the same browns I talked about in my last video, charred brown, orange brown, again wet in wet. I think if you, if you look at a lot of fantasy artists, great fantasy artists, canvas artists from that period, which is when this piece of artwork from Simon Bisley was done, you know, Frazetta, those guys, because they worked in oils, I imagine, I don't actually know for sure, but they've got that very rich selection of colours that are fused together in interesting ways and wet in wet's really one of the only ways to replicate that with an acrylic paint because oils take many, many days to dry so you can work with lots of different colours and works extremely well but with acrylics because they dry so quickly it's very hard to get that same sort of effect so wet and wet using a medium just gives you a little bit of that same feeling so here I've taken peanut butter and I've mixed sunny skin tone in with the peanut butter and I'm really shaping where I want all of the lights I've talked a lot about light and where it should sit in your painting decision-making process. It's, it should always be one of the first things you consider. And as in the artwork, the model is standing and looking off to his left, with the viewing angle uh, from the right-hand side, I wanted to have a similar lighting situation to the artwork. So my light is actually coming from the right-hand side of the model, from the upper right-hand side which is the opposite uh, direction from the last two painting videos. So a lot of the decision making about where light would hit, where it would reflect is, is made much, much easier by just having that at the forefront of your mind. This is an incredible sculpt, I have to say, when I was painting it. I just I was I was marveling at how much it looks like Arnie. Which when you think about it, I mean this is the size of my thumb, this model. To have a likeness that is just immediately recognizable as a real human is a testament to the sculptor. Sergi Alenkov, I think is his name. Well done. And a and a blast, absolute blast to paint. Probably my favorite surface to paint wasn't always, but it is definitely now, is skin tones. Working with the myriad of different textures and colors and soft volumes, it's, it's just a lot of fun, a lot of fun to paint. So this model is obviously predominantly all skin tone, so I was going to enjoy this irrespective of... Uh, anything else so uh, this is just still continuing to create uh, 
the light situation, sunny skin tone, peanut butter, slowly mixing in more sunny skin tone, sketching, not considering smoothness of transitions, just really considering exactly where I want everything in terms of light. And we are going to so this this was this was the decision I made when I when I started painting this. I had again not planned on using the airbrush for this model because I felt that with such a a rough and textured piece of artwork that I wouldn't I wouldn't need to use the airbrush to help get that same atmosphere and uh, feeling. But what ended up happening was because the sculpt is just anatomically perfect with such clearly defined volumes and muscles and this this the sketching look that that rough uh, look just didn't feel like it was going to be right and so i wanted this to be not a direct copy but but an interpretation of those same colors so i at about this point made the call that i was going to use the airbrush to smooth it out which is yeah, probably not surprising to people who've watched the other two videos is it's a pretty integral part of my process normally, but it's always good to mix things up. Says the guy who didn't mix things up. One thing that I was going to show, and I am showing here in this video, but probably less than I initially planned is the way that you can do the same glazing that I do with the airbrush, just with a normal brush, uh, through much more dilute layers, and I will talk about that a little bit later on, but here we go in with the airbrush. So what I did here is I, I went with peanut butter and a little bit of sunny skin tone as my first uh, layer. This is extremely dilute, and the reason for this is to really add more of that rich orangey yellow skin tone color back into the model. If you look at the artwork, and again, I'll uh, probably share a link in the description or something. It's what YouTubers do, I think, for a link to the, the actual piece of artwork so that you can refer to the colors I'm trying to add. So here I've taken the Scarlet from Vallejo Model Color, mixed in a little bit of Chimera Red, and I'm focusing heavily on the lower sections, really looking at the artwork, considering where those red sections would uh, needed to be placed on the model. It's the lower part of the thighs, uh, underneath a lot of the arms. And there was quite a lot of redness in the face in the artwork, so I had to continually refine that. So here, green, the same green, olive green. So what I've basically done is taken those same colors that I used in Wet and Wet, and I'm using the airbrush to reintroduce them with a little bit more softness and smoothness. The effect of that peanut butter and sunny skin tone glaze type consistency has already smoothed out a lot of the transitions. So I'm going back in here with a much brighter color. This is mostly sunny skin tone, I think with a little ice yellow. This is very much about the light. Taking those areas where I've highlighted and using the airbrush to help reinforce that volume. And I'm basically taking this a little bit too far and continue to take it a little bit too far with the intent to, as always, bring it back down, which will help smooth everything out. So this is 
a method I talk a lot about in the other videos I've done. It's the sketch and refine and the way that I create enough contrast is going extremely bright lights and then doing several dilute layers of color over the top which helps smooth the transitions and also add more value contrast. So this is Vallejo model color ivory being very much more considered than the previous sketching period but still quite rough. That was actually done whilst my airbrush was still, my compressor was still going and I was still uh, in the midst of airbrushing so I just wanted to add more color, uh, sorry more value so that I could then reintroduce a little bit more of the color. And So this is peanut butter, oh nice little bit of overspray there, good stuff. Uh, peanut butter and sunny skin tone and you can, you can see just how much additional power those colors have when I use the airbrush. Here's going to be a bit of magnificent uh, YouTubing. Gavin, hello, I'm recording YouTube audio. Say hello to the listeners. Hello, everybody. This is Gavin Clark. Yes, so I'm just <laughs> recording my Conan video. I'm doing some airbrushing at the moment. It's just repetition, so... Uh, cool. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm coming over in the morning. Okay. I'll call you back tomorrow. I'll call you back when I finish recording. Yeah, right. I'll speak to you later. Gracias. Just great YouTubing stuff there. Gavin Clark. Uh, so, the pure peanut butter glaze that just happened there you can see it, it it's almost killed all of the all of the contrast that i built in and that's the the downside of this technique is it reduces the overall contrast between light and dark areas but what it does do is it's extremely smooth and really nice transition so the challenge is continuing to have enough contrast, have enough uh, interest whilst having those smooth transitions. So with this model, because the skin is such a crucial aspect, I, I actually go in with the airbrush and with the brush and continually add and, and refine and tweak and work in many, many times. Although it only took probably about two hours in total the skin I think I use use the airbrush maybe <clears throat> four or five times throughout this process which you'll which you'll see in the in this video and the upcoming videos and in many ways it looks like I'm repeating myself perhaps if someone was a little bit more controlled with the airbrush a little bit better at understanding nuances or maybe was a little bit smoother with their highlighting in the first instance they wouldn't need to to use as many layers or try to refine as often so that's probably a, a downside of this video but I think the end result is a very convincing uh, representation of the artwork so I'm happy with taking the, the amount of time that I did uh, that's the AK interactive ultramat varnish which again something I talked about a lot in my other videos really important especially with the peanut butter color in this mix peanut butter is a scale fantasy range and they are very very satin finish so by using the matte varnish you can see here all of the reflectiveness is gone and you're just getting a very true representation of what the model looks like so that was really fun you know that was about 40 minutes of work there to get that result and i think that's a really interesting and convincing skin tone with a lot of nuance but because i was continually referring back to that piece of art there, there was much more light in the in the upper parts of the skin and i i just wasn't happy with where it was at and, and wanted to add more and so we go back in with the same colors as before. This is a, 
a painting video that's just going to show how to use sunny skin tone and peanut butter. Get amongst it. So it's interesting when you look at the hair and how it was black. I painted the hair black, particularly uh, looking at that angle right there. You can see exactly what I mean when I say that using an airbrush or using a glaze as a filter in the same way that I have will not just bring your lights down, but it will bring your shadows up closer to the mid-tone. It's really evident there on the hair because the hair was black, which is the darkest color you can have. And yet those layers of airbrushing have resulted in a much more deep dark red, and in some cases even a light pinkish red, which is, is a, again, as I said, a great lesson in why you need to over contrast if this is a technique that you're going to work with. The facial features in the artwork have a lot of green in the lower half of the face and if you were to do a little bit of research online you'll see this actually has roots in the ancient masters works where they generally break the face down into three areas three zones the upper forehead which has a lot of yellow in the skin tone the middle half of the face the cheek which has more redness and the lower half of the face which has more blue and the, the reason for those three colors being integrated into skin tones there is uh, the skin at the very top of the head your melon is uh, there's not much underneath that except for your skull and so the light reflecting off there tends to reflect a little tiny hint of the sunlight. The cheek, however, has a lot more blood vessels and things underneath. And so because skin is translucent, when you have light hitting it, you'll tend to see more of that slight redness coming through. And the lower half of the face is obviously more in shadow and has elements of generally hair which results in a darker appearing lower half of the face so in the Simon Bisley artwork that I'm replicating there is a lot of bluey green tones in the lower half of the face so that's something I'm trying to work in to not just the face but also the rest of the model and you can see the greens are reflecting the environment that I hope to be working with on the base later on. You probably see me do that a lot. I don't I don't glue models onto my plinth things that I hold them on usually because I like to check the overall look of the model on its on its base, on its final uh, yeah, surroundings environment because I think that sometimes this informs your decision making about whether you need to add more or less contrast or texture or uh, can also help your decision making with the base sometimes the base is overpoweringly strong and you want to bring it back down so by having the model freely accessible to pull off and put on the base it's really really helpful for the whole process. So again, this is sunny skin tone, a little bit less peanut butter at this point, and I'm using basically the same approach as I do with the airbrush, but on a much more micro scale, doing a little bit of light and then using a dilute 
paint to reduce it. So here that's almost sunny skin tone and ivory mixed together. There's a really high light on the piece of artwork on his upper temple area. So that was the decision there. And that's the glaze of peanut butter and sunny skin tone, just trying to smooth that out. One interesting challenge with volumes like chest and the musculature of the great man Arnold Schwarzenegger here is each of those little elements is something that you would normally consider a separate volume. You know, those, those pecs, those glorious pecs have very clearly defined shapes but it's vitally important when you're painting a skin tone to, to not treat them all as separate. They need to be considered as a whole and they also need to link together even though they look very much like separate volumes. So you'll see sometimes I look at a, at a volume such as these pecs and even though when you consider it how you would normally highlight it, you wouldn't have a shadow or you wouldn't have a light in a specific area. Sometimes I'll use the lights to join them to the adjacent muscles. It's particularly evident on the uh, shoulder muscle and bicep on the left arm. At the moment, you can see that shoulder muscle has very much got a lot of redness and a lot of separation from the bicep and tricep muscles and it makes them look separate like separate elements and they do need to be joined together and brought together and so I don't know if I do it in this video actually but at some point in the next hour and 45 minutes of video that I'm going to be commentating I will join those two together and make it look much more like one single piece. So this whole process, the, the, the thing I enjoy most, and probably one of the reasons I, I, I enjoy using a wet in wet or the sketchy process to, to quickly build up and establish the concept is because this is, this is the most fun part here being able to work with different tones and interesting colors, glazes to quickly tweak things. This is the part that I find most fun and enjoyable. So there's a lot of back and forth, different colors being added into the mixture, little lights being added, little skin wrinkles on the knees being played with interesting how the, actually once I forgot I did this but when I look at the end result the the knee texturing isn't as defined I quite like that how it looked there so to to Talk about the, the artwork. When I was probably early teens, my mum and dad got me a, a piece of art, uh, art, sorry, an art book, a fantasy art book, which had uh, many pieces of art that I still remember to this day. And this wasn't in the art book in question, this art book, but there was a... a Simon Bisley, a few pieces of his work in that book. The majority of it was, of course, the great man, Frank Frazetta. But they just, I remember looking at them and, and back then I don't think I ever considered that I would paint things like that. I think I just loved looking at them and, and you know, the firing of the imagination that that sort of art gave me the 
you know, that still to this day, Frank Frazetta is, anytime I see a piece of his work, I can immediately recognize it, as I'm sure many of people watching this video can. But it just, it's so inspiring. So, this idea of trying to replicate one of those artworks. Oh, there's that joining bit I was talking about before. Uh, it's actually not the first time I've tried to do it. I did another barbarian sculpt from Terrible Kids Stuff where I actually tried to replicate a piece of Frazetta art. Use a lot of lot of greyish skin tones and then added a huge amount of colours, purples and all sorts of other colours in there. Really awesome fun. Uh, it actually won a gold at the Queensland Model Hobby Expo a few years ago in the fantasy category, which is fun. So this isn't the first time I've tried to do something similar to this, and it probably won't be the last time, because one of the really, really interesting things I took away from this whole experience is just forcing myself to look at something else and try and understand the colors and how those colors interact it's it's different to how i would normally have approached painting this model i would have defaulted to the colors i normally use i would have defaulted to the tried and true methods that i've always used but here i was constantly reevaluating whether something looked right or whether something needed a bit more orange or a bit more red or a bit more yellow or in the face of or in the case of this face and lower half of the chin a little bit more green and blue so that was really a nice challenge to the way that I consider the painting So I'll definitely do it again, but I may choose a piece of artwork that's perhaps a little bit more, uh, not, not an artwork, I may choose a model that's a little bit more representative of the artwork I'm trying to replicate with some more artificially sculpted shapes as opposed to this anatomic specimen. So this video is almost at a close. We'll finish with a skin tone that is not anywhere near complete, unfortunately. The majority of the second video, again, just continues working on that skin tone, refining, continuing to, I won't say repeat the same process because I'm definitely adding nuance to it and bringing the airbrushing a little bit more detail orientated but this is an exercise in trying to replicate a piece of art and so I'm reworking a lot so you'll get to see a little bit more of that process in the next video before I start on the leathers and the final video which is the metals the entire video was done at times two speed by the way so this has been an hour and ten minutes of painting on the skin tone thus far and as I said before it still blows my mind how much it just looks like Arnie there incredible all right, if you have any suggestions for future videos you would like to see or specific topics, feel free to send them my way. You can catch me on my Twitter account is usually the best place to find me. I usually reply on Twitter. Don't really understand how this newfangled YouTube works. It's only been around for about 15, 20 years, so... Cool, I'm going to 
let the video finish up in silence. Enjoy more of me moving a little brush around on a tiny little replica of Arnold Schwarzenegger. And don't forget, if you want to see the colours that I used, I'll leave those at the end of the video as well. Great stuff. All right, big dinner out. Thank you.